Hello again, it's Cons, and today I have a pretty cool video. Uh, I've got a farming route for Steamworks Fuel that uses an exploit in the Guiding Lands that I haven't talked about before. Uh, I'll get to the exploit in a second, but I'll just show you the set. Um, it's kind of stacked, it's pretty optimized. I, I went kind of overboard with this because I'm going to be like trying to get as much fuel as possible. However, you don't need the vast majority of these skills. Um, the important skills are Geologist uh, at level 3 for the extra mining nodes, Master Gatherer for the increased mining speed, and honestly that's basically it. I have no clue if Forager's Luck or Detector do anything, so you can swap out the guild work waste if you find that they don't. Um, the rest of the skills are just to kind of optimize the set. So I think in order of importance, I like some stamina skills, so I can sort of do the long runs quickly. I like hunger resistance, so I don't have to bring like uh, meats. Uh, I like stealth and intimidator to help monsters not notice me. The route takes us through both the tundra and the volcano, potentially. So I like to bring uh, cooling and warming decoration, so I don't need to take cool drinks and, and hot drinks. Uh, what else? Tool Specialist is uh, is pretty much essential as well. Sorry, I forgot about Tool Specialist. I have that at level 5. Level 3 is more than enough, but um, but yeah, we're going to be using the Assassin's Creed Mantle to speed it up, and that's quite important. Aquatic Mobility is quite nice for the Tundra and for the little water area in the Coral Reef. Uh, speed Crawler is just ridiculous. You really, it makes basically no difference, but I have it anyway. And it only, look at this Naga Mail. You can sort this out for a much better piece of armor, so it's very easy to make this set. You don't have to worry about it. Um, if you have a Safi weapon, get Lunastra Essence on it if you're willing to, but you don't really have to. I'm running three points of Lunastra anyway, just to make the set more accessible. But anyway, anyway, you don't need to make this set. Just get those skills that are the most important ones. I bring Farcaster and the Combines for more Farcasters, just in case we get aggroed and we can't um, use the map to, to fast travel. I bring Dung Bombs and Flash Pods to help me gather. Pretty standard item set, it's not, nothing in particular. Set up your radial menu too. The most important thing is the Assassin's Creed hood. Now, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to eat for Feline Tailor. I did a video on how that stacks, uh, but with Feline Tailor, and also Harvest Dumb, again, I'm not sure if it makes a difference, but it's quite nice to have. Uh, with Tailor and five points of tool resistance, our Assassin's Creed Mantle uptime is going to be like absolutely insane. We're going to have almost 100% Mantle uptime. I'll show you the route to now, as well as the exploit, so I'll see you when I get to a mining node. And here we are. You can see I have a mining outcrop at red. That's kind of a prerequisite, we want to get them all to red. I'm about to do Volcano off, off screen, I'll, I'll come back once that's done. But for example, with the Coral Reef, you can see how far the red bar is full. Now, if I mine this mining outcrop three out of the four times, four because I have Geologist, one, two, and three. Oh, some guiding crystals there. Um, one, two, and three. What you'll notice is that the bar hasn't increased at all. Coral is still at the exact same level. However, if I were to mine this one more time, You can see now that the bar has gone up. And so essentially you can keep all of your bars at red by just never mining the final node. That alongside my optimized route uh, means that you can get a really quick number of the uh, guiding land sort of fuel chunks. Here I'll show you them. These items over here, they're worth 500 fuel each and you can get them at a really quick rate following my route. I promise I will get to the route as soon as possible. There's just some quite important background information I need to go over first. Uh, every area, so for example I'm in the volcano now, has four nodes spawn. It has two bone piles and two mining nodes. We've got bone pile, bone pile, mining nodes and mining nodes. If you've ever seen more than two in one rotation, uh, it's just because it's reset halfway through while you were running. In fact that just happened to me in a take and hopefully I can show you that. But um, yeah, there are two spots. I'll show you where they can all spawn. There can be a mining node here. There can be a mining node at the end here. Also, it's much easier to see them when they're at max level. So right now I'm at yellow, but when they're red, you won't be able to miss them. The third spot is over here. And the final spot is where I was uh, showing on the map on the other side. Now, once you've spotted two of these nodes, that's it. You're done with the volcano, for example. There's the second one. Um, so once you've mined both mining nodes, you don't need to explore the rest of the volcano. You can just continue on the route. The mining nodes in the coral area can spawn in this corner over here, sort of along this wall. Oh, there we go. We just had a reset. Uh, I might as well demonstrate now. If we now go back and check the volcano and the effluvium areas, you can see all of those mining nodes that were on the map have disappeared, and that's because they've reset. So that's a good way to know whether or not they've reset. You can just check if they've still been highlighted. Uh, if I did a loop and it went really quickly and I came back here and I wasn't sure if this node was 
a new one or if it was from previously i can just check to see if it's already been highlighted on my map but anyway this is the uh, one of the money node spawns the second possible spawning location is on this wall over here the third possible spawning location is on this wall over here and what i'll do is i'll probably just link the unedited sort of hour-long footage of me doing loops to test the coal rate and then that way you can uh, you can see where all the locations are but yeah here's the final coral area and again, I want to emphasize, the moment you've found two areas, uh, two mining nodes, and you finish them, you, you don't need to explore the rest of the coral reef. You're done. Um, keep a vague eye out to see whether or not uh, the mining nodes have reset, in which case you can sort of loop back around. But, uh, but yeah, once you've gotten the two nodes, move on. And now for the route itself. We use this base camp, Area 3, as a sort of central location. Make sure you've unlocked it. Down there is the volcano and effluvium areas. We'll come back to that in a second. Uh, for now, make sure you have your tail radar for the extra gathers and head up towards the coral reef. Uh, you'll note that I haven't showed every single mining location for every single area just because that got kind of like rambly and it made the video last way too long. Uh, I'm gonna upload uh, an unlisted video of me just doing this route for like an hour. So so be sure to check that out. Uh, if you, I would definitely recommend you watch like uh, 10 minutes of it just to see me doing the loop over and over really hammers it home. But yeah, you wanna run into the coral area, uh, peek over, look for your gathering nodes. Um, we can see that there's one over there for the, uh, for the, for the ores and there'll be one up top as well. You want to get those and then head to the tundra if you have the AC mantle. If you don't have the Assassin's Creed mantle unlocked, then you probably want to go straight to the volcano, in which case you would uh, fast travel back to that base camp and jump down. But we are going to head to the tundra. Um, uh, so we are in the tundra. Again, you just want to sort of explore for your mining nodes. Uh, I'm not going to show all of the possible locations. Again, just check out the unlisted video. Uh, watch that and you'll see sort of where all the mining is. And I do it fairly quickly. You can play it on like two times speed if you're if you're interested. Hopefully this is at two times speed as well. But you want to loop through the tundra and once you've found all your mining nodes, just teleport back to base camp. If you are aggroed by a monster, you'll have to far caster here. But uh, either way, it's fine. So we've done the coral reef and we've done the tundra. Again, you would have skipped the tundra if you don't have the Assassin's Creed mantle. After coral, you would have just flown straight back here and then resumed from here. So anyway, we jump down. We head to the volcano. And again, we do our little search. Uh, so for example, I can see there's one mining node over there and I can see that there's one mining node over there. So I'd get those both and then I would run back to the, uh, the uh, effluvium zone. Uh, and again, I would look around the effluvium zone. There's what one spawn has, uh, has occurred over there. There is another spawn probably up there in the area somewhere. And then once we're done with the effluvium area, we just teleport back to base camp, uh, Eastern Camp 3, and we start the process all over again. And that's all there really is to the route. It's very simple. You jump back here and you fly out again. You might want to throw effluvium resistance on the set, maybe, I don't know. But uh, yeah, we, we explore the coral reef, we go back to the tundra, down to the fly back to base camp, down to the volcano, and then to the effluvium zone, and then fly back to base camp. Uh, it is quite simple, in fact, uh, and so hopefully that makes sense. The rest of the video will just sort of be the actual results from me testing this for an hour to show you the drop rates and just some miscellaneous sort of concerns and considerations. Again, be sure to check out the unlisted video if you uh, if you want to see all of the mining nodes in detail. And we are back. Uh, it's been roughly an hour and in that time, I managed to get 9 to 2 Dragon Veid coal chunks. Um, as a reminder, they are worth 500 fuel each for Steamworks, and so that totals to 46,000, quick maths. You also see I gained a few of the sort of rare 11 crystals. They're not that frequent. You can maybe get an idea for what the drop rates are from this, but uh, I mean, it's still nice. And these are generally the ones that I'm missing out on. So this method is quite handy for that. But yeah, 46,000 and don't forget the cats. I am not sure if there's an internal buffer on the cat. So you might want to come and sort of report in your things every maybe 20 or 30 minutes, but we will see now. When you report your investigation, it shows you what your cats have gathered. Um, and so we gained two from um, my main palico, you worthless piece of shit, <laughs> and uh, three from the uh, other tail rider. That is five more added on, so that's another sort of 2,500 fuel. Um, 97, 8,500, so yeah, it's 48,500. Now I should mention, I had some mix-ups with some monsters interrupting me, and also I didn't know where the gathering nodes were in the, uh, in the tundra at the start of this run. I missed them a few times. So actually, this would probably be more like 50,000 if you actually like knew what you were doing the whole way through. So uh, yeah, 50,000 in total fuel over this one hour of farming. I also ended it like a minute early. 
So I think it's I think it's pretty safe to say. I mean, you could also just trade in some of the random ores you get. Anyway, 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 I'm, I'm rambling now. I'm going to have to cut this out. But uh, yeah, we'll go and turn it in at the Steamworks just so I can show you how much we got. And so I will just turn in so we can see how much fuel we gained. Help the Steamworks. Oh, 99. Uh, I think either I miscounted or maybe when I was like getting my volcano up to red, I forgot to sell two of the, two of the items. Uh, I think that's supposed to be 97. But as I said... Um, because of my issues with the tundra and just generally ending it a little bit early, 99, 100 is, is basically sort of the accurate number that you would expect. So yeah, 50,000 fuel essentially gained from an hour of farming. That's crazy. <laughs> I could actually do a bit of quick mass and tell you what you'd expect to get for that. The other day I put out a video talking about the new drop rates for Steamworks for the event with the gold, silver and steel melding tickets. So if you're interested in what the numbers are precisely and where they come from and stuff like that, then have a look at that video. Hopefully I've linked it in the description. But uh, in that video, we concluded that on average, if you spent 300 fuel, you get a sort of silver melding ticket. Uh, it would take you 30,000 fuel for a gold and a celestial print. Um, and so those are the numbers that we're going to be going by. We also found that it takes one hour to spend 15,000 fuel. Now look, 50,000, 60,000, 20% difference. Um, so really, we take us one an hour and 10 minutes. So I'm going to use that farming time to get us up to a nice roundable number. But yeah, if you farm one hour and 10 minutes in the guiding lands using this method, you get 60,000 fuel, just increasing 50,000 by 20%. Um, and then that would sort of amount to two gold tickets, two celestial prints and 200 silver tickets. Now that sounds like a really good return on investment, but you do have to remember you're going to have to spend all of that fuel at the Steamworks and it does take quite a while. 60,000 fuel would take four hours in the Steamworks. Roughly, it's a one to four ratio. If you, if you spend 10 minutes farming fuel, you'll probably spend 40 minutes spending that fuel at the Steamworks. Now, you can automate this overnight using a macro. Uh, I have a tutorial for that uh, on my channel for PS4. You can sort of modify that for PC uh, if you're just willing to use AutoHotKey uh, macro software. I mean, it's pretty standard stuff. But anyway, yeah, check out that video if you're interested in how to automate it overnight. But yeah, just keep in mind that it's a pretty big time sink just spending the fuel in general. So get your rubber band ready. But uh, yeah, so that's basically the conclusions. One hour and 10 minutes will get you enough fuel for two gold tickets, 200 silver tickets, and two celestial prints. Hopefully that helped. Hopefully you find the method useful. You can modify it to farm for research points too, of course, just by going for the bone piles instead. They have five gathers rather than four, um, but the method is exactly the same. You also get a bunch of the guiding crystals which you need. So yeah, it's, it's all, all in all a pretty great method that yields 50,000 fuel per hour. Uh, I guess I will wait for this overdrive to occur and then leave the video because I don't want to blue ball you. But yeah, thank you for watching. Have a lovely day. Take it easy. Bye bye.